in this video today, we're looking at an experiment to determine the equilibrium constant for a chemical reaction using spectrophotometry, in other words, using Beer's law. We're going to be looking at the reaction between iron 3 plus and thiocyanate ions. Both of those ions in aqueous solution are somewhat colorless, but when they react, they form rather quickly a complex ion called iron thiocyanate, or FeSCN2+. That complex ion is brightly colored in solution. It's a, it's a brownish orange color when it's dilute. It's actually blood red, dark blood red when it's very concentrated. We're going to be using dilute solutions today, so we're going to see a light brownish orange color in them. So there's three parts to this experiment. In the first part, we're going to just look at the absorption spectrum of the complex ion to determine which wavelength it absorbs best. Once we know lambda max, the wavelength of maximum absorption, we can move on to part B. In the second part of the experiment, we're going to take five standard solutions of iron thiocyanate, so five solutions whose concentrations we know, and we're going to measure their absorbance values at or very near lambda max, the, absorb the wavelength that we just uh, determined. From, those, from the data we get for that part of the experiment, we'll make a Beer's Law plot and that will be a graph of absorbance values versus concentrations. In the third part of the experiment, we're going to take five test tubes and we're going to mix dilute solutions of iron and thiocyanate to create five equilibrium systems of iron thiocyanate and the reactants. We'll measure the absorbance of those five test tubes and use the data to calculate the Kc for the reaction five different times. We'll then take the average of those five Kc's to say what the Kc for the reaction is at room temperature. All right, so we're here to begin part A of the experiment today. We're going to determine the absorption spectrum and find the wavelength of maximum absorbance, lambda max, for the iron thiocyanate complex. The first thing I want to do is calibrate my spectrophotometer. We're using the Vernier SpectroViz today. We're connected to a LabQuest and displaying it on, a lab, on a, um, an iPad. So we need to calibrate by tapping and choosing Calibrate from the menu. Normally the SpectroViz will require about a 90 second warm up period, but I've been already using it, so I'm going to skip the warm up. Now in the SpectroViz I've got a cuvette with distilled water in it. Distilled water is the solvent in all of our solutions today and we want the SpectroViz to ignore the distilled water's absorbance value. So I'm just going to finish by pressing Finish Calibration, and now the device is, is basically setting itself to zero. It's going to, it's going to measure zero absorbance with distilled water present. So now we can press OK to go back to the main screen, and on that screen we should see um, a zero value when we begin measuring absorbance values. All right, so now that we've calibrated the SpectroViz, let's measure the absorption spectrum for the iron thiocyanate. I'll take out the cuvette with our distilled water, and I'll discard the water. Now let's mix the two reagents in this experiment, the two reactants. So over here, I've got some 0.2 molar iron nitrate, and beside it, some 0.002 molar potassium thiocyanate. The iron nitrate is the source of the Fe3 plus in our reaction, and it's a pretty much a colorless solution. This is 0.2 molar. I'll just pour some of that in a small beaker. Yeah, put the beaker on a white background so you can see the reaction. Now I'll take the potassium thiocyanate, which contains the SCN minus, and we'll pour some of that in the beaker. And we can see right away a dark reddish orange or reddish brown color. I'm going to dilute it with some distilled water. So I'll just pour some water in. I'll fill up the beaker so I get a pretty nice orange-brown color. So there's a dilute solution of our iron thiocyanate. I'll take the cuvette that we just calibrated with and I'll pour this in. Now normally you would rinse the cuvette three times with the solution you were going to fill it with. But here we're just measuring the absorption spectrum, so it's not quite as, as critical to do that. So I'll wipe off the outside of the cuvette, getting rid of any water and solutions on the outside. Also make sure there's no air bubbles inside there, no fingerprints. Let's put that in the spectroviz, lined up so the light goes through the clear sides. And now on the computer, we're just 
going to press the collect button to measure the um, absorption spectrum. We'll discard some old data that was there. So now the device is showing us the absorption spectrum. I'll click stop. And now that I've stopped, you can, I hope you can see this in the video, but the absorption spectrum runs from 400 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. If you have that on your handout, you can, you can sketch those in. And then from zero to about one absorbance unit. Absorbance values don't have any units technically. Now the, the graph, the absorption spectrum goes from a, about a 0 0.7, 0 0.8 um, absorbance value, it rises to a maximum and then falls back down to close to zero in the reddish region. Now it makes sense that the absorbance values are so low in the reddish region of the spectrum, the longest wavelengths, because the solution looks reddish orange. So it's not absorbing those colors, it's transmitting them. Now the wavelength that we're looking for is the one that has the maximum absorbance value. So the computer is telling me that that's about 450 nanometers, 450 nanometers. You're going to want to mark that on your sketch of the spectrum. Uh, now that we've done part A of the experiment and we know lambda max, we're ready to move on to part B. In part B, we're going to collect data to create a Beer's Law plot for iron thiocyanate. We have five volumetric flasks that we're going to prepare. In each of the five flasks, we've placed five milliliters of the iron nitrate solution that we used earlier, the 0 0.200 molar solution of iron. Note that that's a pretty concentrated iron solution. To the five flasks, we're going to add varying amounts of the 0.002 molar potassium thiocyanate that we talked about earlier. So in the first flask, we're putting one milliliter. In the second, we're putting two milliliters, all the way down to the fifth flask, which will have five milliliters. These are 50 milliliter volumetric flasks, so we're going to fill them up with distilled water, so the total volume in each flask will be 50.0 milliliters. Now, the first four flasks have already been prepared. They've got the five milliliters of iron in each one, and they've got one, two, three, and four milliliters of the thiocyanate. You can see the concentration is getting larger as we used more and more potassium thiocyanate. The um, amount of iron thiocyanate produced is, be, is increasing. We're going to prepare the fifth flask right now, which needs five mils of iron and five mils of the potassium thiocyanate. Now, I've already measured the five mils of the iron solution into the flask, and I've added some distilled water also. So here's my 50 mil volumetric flask. I've got my potassium thiocyanate, and I'm using a pipette and a pipette bulb to do this. Let's see if I can do this easily in a video setting. So holding the pipette, I'm going to draw up a little bit more than five milliliters. That should be good. I'm going to put my finger on top. Looking at eye level, I'm going to lower the meniscus to, let's, let's see, we're starting at about four. So right now it's at four milliliters. So I'm going to let it drain from 4 milliliters to 9 milliliters, which will give me um, 5 milliliters total in this flask. So now we're letting it drain. You can see perhaps the orange color in the flask. And when it gets to 9 milliliters, we're going to stop. So from 4 to 9, right there. And we'll get rid of any drop on the end. This now has 5 milliliters of the potassium thiocyanate in it. Now I'm very close to the line on my volumetric flask, so I'm going to just top it up with some more distilled water, get the meniscus to be right on the line of the flask, perfect. We'll stop the flask and shake it to mix. All right, so this is what I did a few minutes ago um, with these other flasks. So there's our fifth and final solution. So we have the five volumetric flasks prepared and we're ready to measure their absorbance values using the spectral bits. All right, so we're ready to start collecting the absorbance values of the five standard solutions that we prepared in our volumetric flasks. I've already gone ahead and poured some of these five, first four solutions rather, into four different cuvettes. Now the fact that I'm using different cuvettes is a small source of error that I'm using, I'm basically doing out of convenience. We really should be using the same cuvette that we had that we had calibrated with earlier. Now the fifth solution, I've poured some into a small beaker. I have a fifth cuvette here. 
When you're filling the cuvettes with the solutions, remember you need to fill them a little bit more than two-thirds full so that the light that passes through them will go through the solution and not through the air. They don't have to be filled completely to the top, but they have to be filled about two-thirds, three-quarters full. I guess maybe more like three-quarters full. So there's my five solutions ready to go. And now we're ready to start collecting data. In the um, SpectroViz, I've got the cuvette with distilled water put back inside, and the reading is, is still very, very close to zero. It's not exactly zero, but I'm, rather than calibrating, I'm going to go ahead and use it again. So I'll take the cuvette with distilled water out, and now let's start putting the five different cuvettes in. We're going to go from the least concentrated, the lightest one, to the most concentrated, the darkest one. If you have your lab handout, we're on table two down here. In table two, we're going to record the absorbance values of the five solutions, and you're gonna to need to calculate the concentration of iron thiocyanate in each one. To calculate that, you'll need to set up five little ice tables and do some dilution calculations. The descriptions are here above that. So let's go ahead and record the five absorbance values. So starting with flask number one, place it in so the light goes through the clear side, and you can see the absorbance value is 0 0.187. So I'm going to record that on my handout for flask number one. Take that cuvette out. These have already been cleaned and dried, and there's no air bubbles. So put the second one in. It's a more concentrated solution, so it had better have a bit of a higher absorbance value. So the second flask absorbance jumps up, to about 0 0.321. Take out the second solution, put in the third one. There we go. So the third one's absorbance value is again a bit higher, 0. 464. Let's go to the fourth solution. Make sure there's no air bubbles. Make sure it's put in all the way. So this solution should have, a, again, a higher absorbance value. And it goes up to 0 0.644. 645, I guess. This is like reading an electronic balance, the last decimal place can fluctuate just slightly. And then finally, our most concentrated solution, the one that had five milliliters of each of the two reagents, this one should have the highest absorbance value because it's the darkest solution. It is about 0 0.855, 855 absorbance value. So now we've got the five absorbances we're going to calculate, or you'll calculate, the concentration of iron thiocyanate in each one of those flasks. And from that, you'll be able to create a Beer's Law plot. You'll graph the absorbance values on the y-axis, the, co the concentrations of iron thiocyanate on the x-axis. You should get a straight line graph. It's a Beer's Law plot, and we know that absorbance and concentration are directly proportional. You'll want to get the equation of that straight line. So on a graphing calculator, you could do linear regression. Or if you're using a spreadsheet program, you can insert a trend line and make sure you display the equation on the chart. Of course, if you're adventurous, you could also pick two points on your own line of best fit and calculate the equation of the line of best fit if you prefer. So there we have it. We've done part two of the experiment, part B, and we're ready to move on to part C, where we actually collect data to find the equilibrium constant for this reaction. All right, now that we've completed parts A and B, we have the absorption spectrum, and we've got the data, data to create our Beer's Law plot, we're ready to move on to part C of the experiment, where we collect data to actually measure the equilibrium constant for our chemical reaction. Now, in this third part of the experiment, we're still mixing the potassium thiocyanate with iron 3 nitrate, but there's a very important difference. In the first part, in, sorry, in the first two parts, we were using 0.2 molar iron solutions, but now in this third part, we're using a much more dilute iron nitrate solution. It's 0.00200 molarity. 
So its concentration initially in the stock solution is now the same as the potassium thiocyanate that we're using, which is also 0.00200 molarity. Now, just like before, the iron solution is also dissolved in some nitric acid, which prevents some precipitation from occurring. The nitric acid, though, will not interfere with our experiment. Now, I've got five test tubes here already partially prepared. So we're looking at part C of the experiment. If you have the handout, we're looking at table three as I discuss this. Otherwise, you can simply listen and maybe write some numbers down if you want. So in each of the five test tubes, we've already pipetted three milliliters, 3.00 milliliters of the iron solution. So there's three milliliters of 0 0.00200 molarity iron nitrate in each of the five test tubes. We've also added some distilled water. We've pipetted water into all five test tubes. The first test tube has six milliliters of water. The second one has five and then four and then three and the fifth test tube has two milliliters of distilled water in it. So right now the, the volumes are simply missing the third ingredient, our, our other reactant, the potassium thiocyanate. So we're going to use a pipette and we're going to be adding the potassium thiocyanate to each of the five test tubes. We're going to put one milliliter of potassium thiocyanate in the first tube, two milliliters, three milliliters, four milliliters, and five milliliters in the last test tube. So I've just completed pipetting the last uh, component into the five test tubes. I'm not sure if you can see clearly in the video, but uh, because the amount of potassium thiocyanate was increasing from one mil to five mils, the color gets darker as you go because the concentration of iron thiocyanate is increasing as we go from test tube one to test tube five. I've poured some of each solution into a cuvette and I've also recalibrated our spectroviz. Now, I'm not sure if I pointed this, this out earlier, but we are using a wavelength of 450 nanometers. We're using the wavelength, which was lambda max in our absorption spectrum. Let me take out the water, and you're going to want to record the absorbance values for these solutions. This is table four in our handout. This table has four columns in it. The first column is the initial concentration of iron in each of the five test tubes. We remember the volume was three milliliters for each one. There was 0 0.002 molar concentration, but there's a total of 10 milliliters in each test tube. So we do a dilution calculation to find the initial iron in each test tube. Similarly, we calculate the initial thiocyanate concentration in the second column using its volumes, its concentration, and the total volume of 10 milliliters. In the third column, we're going to record the absorbance values that we see. And in the fourth column, we're going to take those absorbance values and the equation of our Beer's Law line of best fit, and we're going to calculate the concentration of iron thiocyanate at equilibrium. How do we know that these are at equilibrium? Well, if it weren't at equilibrium, there would be a change happening, right? A net forward or net reverse reaction. Since the color is constant, we can assume that these solutions are all at equilibrium. So when we take the absorbance values that we measure and use the Beer's Law plot equation, we'll be able to calculate the iron thiocyanate equilibrium concentrations. Then we can fill in ice tables and calculate Kc in each of the five test tubes. Since the temperature is the same for all five test tubes, we would expect Kc to be the same in all five test tubes. So we'll take the average Kc value at the end. So let's go ahead and measure absorbance values and record those things. So the first, the, most, the least concentrated, has an absorbance value of 0 0.124. So first test tube, the absorbance of the iron thiocyanate is 0 0.124. In the second test tube, a little bit more concentrated iron thiocyanate see a slightly higher um, absorbance value. There we go. 0 0.213 is the absorbance in the second test tube. In the third test tube, again a little bit more concentrated, the absorbance value jumps up to 0 0.332. And in our fourth test tube, which 
sure, make sure there's no air bubbles, you're putting it in the right way into the spectroviz. The absorbance value jumps up again to 0 0.412, 412. And then finally, our fifth test tube its absorbance value should be the highest, it's 0 0.501. All right, so as I said a moment ago, now that we have all five of those absorbance values, we can use the equation of the, from our Beer's Law plot, which was a graph of absorbance and iron thiocyanate concentration. We can calculate the last column of this table, the equilibrium iron thiocyanate. Then you'll know the initial conditions and you'll know the equilibrium iron thiocyanate. You can easily fill in five ice tables and calculate Kc five times for this experiment. Then take the average Kc and you'll report the Kc for this reaction between iron three plus and thiocyanate to make the reddish brown iron three thiocyanate ion.